Normally, I'll usually begin a review by talking a bit about the history of the game I'm reviewing, just to set the stage with some proper context and such. Then, as I transition into the actual review and go into detail about the game's successes and shortcomings, I'll attempt to preserve some air of mystery surrounding my final thoughts and score as I build toward that all-important reveal at the end. But this is not a normal review, because Okami is not a normal game. There is no mystery to preserve here. So let me make this clear right from the onset, because there's no point in beating around the bush, or in this case, the brush. If you're a fan of 3D action-adventure games and haven't played Okami, you've been missing out on one of the very finest representations of the genre ever made. And I'm very happy to say that Capcom has handled the Nintendo Switch port of Okami HD with the utmost care. So much so, in fact, that it makes a strong argument for being the best version of the game yet. And believe me, I would know. I've played and completed Okami not once, not twice, but three times over the years. First on the PlayStation 2 upon the game's original release way back in 2006, then on the Wii two years later, and once more when the HD version debuted on the PS3 in 2012. The crowning achievement of the Capcom-funded Clover Studio, which was tragically shuttered just a few months after Okami's initial release on the PlayStation 2, Okami is uniquely and thoroughly steeped in Japanese folklore and puts you in the paws of the Shinto sun goddess Amaterasu, or Ami for short, who reincarnates as a legendary white wolf in order to save the ancient land of Nippon from the encroaching forces of darkness. Straightforward as this narrative setup may seem, it isn't long before the scope of Ami's quest widens into an epic of sprawling proportions taking you to every last corner of Okami's fanciful take on ancient Japan. And when I say epic, I really mean it. Okami has become famous for its bait-and-switch style of storytelling, wherein you'll find yourself approaching what may feel like the end of the game, only for the narrative goalposts to be moved as a whole new chapter of adventure is laid out before you. And this happens more than once. As such, there's no doubt that Okami requires a great deal of time investment from players, clocking in at around 60 hours for a first playthrough, a number that balloons even more if you're going for 100% completion. That's understandably more time than many players may be able or willing to invest, and there's something to be said for games that overstay their welcome, but Okami is not one of those games. It's lengthy, yes, but it earns that length with a consistently engaging story that brings the land of Nippon to life and keeps you fully invested in the fates of its many delightfully charming characters, rewarding players who see it through with an immensely gratifying conclusion. That's not to say it's perfect. Most would probably agree, as do I, that the pacing could use some tightening up in certain parts, but you'll be too happily wrapped up in exploring Nippon to care very much. And indeed, the game's most important character may be the world of Nippon itself. Presented in a cel-shaded art style that is meant to evoke the woodcut, watercolor style of traditional Japanese inkwash paintings known as sumie, Okami remains a landmark achievement in visual design and graphical presentation that, much like other cel-shaded titles like Zelda The Wind Waker, has aged incredibly well compared to other titles from its console generation that push for realism over artistic experimentation. So when the porting masters over at Hexadrive and Ready at Dawn brought Okami's already groundbreaking art style into the high-definition era for the initial release of Okami HD on the PS3, the results were predictably striking. And thankfully, the fruits of their labor have been faithfully reproduced here on the Switch, as Okami HD looks every bit as amazing rendered at a native 1080p in TV mode as it has on other consoles. But it's in handheld mode that the Switch version of Okami HD truly shines. The game looks downright stunning on the Switch's 720p screen, quite often giving the impression that it just shouldn't be possible to play a game this gorgeous in a handheld format. And the frame rate doesn't miss a beat either, turning in a solid 30fps performance regardless of which mode you're playing in. Simply put, Capcom has handled this port with the utmost care where Okami's all-important visuals are concerned, as they should have, and it absolutely shows. Special mention should also be given to Okami's absolutely brilliant soundtrack, which is a stellar part of the overall experience from start to finish. Deftly combining traditional Japanese instrumentation with a reliably video gamey approach emphasizing strong and memorable melodies, it's no exaggeration for me to say that Okami lays claim to some of my very favorite music of all time, and not just within the realm of video games. Rei Kondo, Masami Ueda, Akari Groves, and Hiroshi Yamaguchi delivered a landmark soundtrack in Okami, and that's just as true today as it was back in 2006. While Okami's gameplay isn't as wildly ambitious as its audiovisual presentation, it more than stands the test of time and can still be considered one of the finest examples of action-adventure game design as defined by the pre-Breath of the Wild era of 3D Zelda. Yes, Okami wears its obvious Zelda inspiration on its sleeve, with the game's director Hideki Kamiya outright admitting in interviews that he created Okami because of Zelda. Progression in Okami feels resoundingly similar to that of traditional 3D Zelda games like Ocarina of Time and Twilight Princess, with a wide linear approach that ensures you always know where to go and what to do in order to advance the story, but also rewards those who explore off the beaten path with a smattering of optional objectives in each area, which you can tackle in whatever order you want, or not at all if you just want to stick to the critical path. 
Okami's various dungeons are also a clear reflection of 3D Zelda design in the way they're segmented into broad rooms separated by doors, with some of those doors requiring keys to open and others remaining locked until you've completed a local puzzle or defeated all the enemies in the area. And of course, each dungeon is associated with the acquisition of a big new ability that you'll then need to use to reach and defeat the boss of said dungeon. So far, so Zelda then. But Okami distinguishes itself from an otherwise established formula with the Celestial Brush, a unique and shockingly well-realized gameplay mechanic that allows players to affect various changes to the world around them in real time. Being a goddess, Amaterasu can use this divine instrument to literally paint onto the world at will, conjuring everything from bombs to gusts of wind out of thin air. The Celestial Brush can have other effects too, like turning night into day or instantly bringing withered trees back to colorful life in a burst of divine intervention. And as Ami learns new Celestial Brush techniques throughout the game, you'll quickly settle into a pattern of experimenting with each new ability to get a feel for its puzzle solving and combat utility. It's just a wonderful mechanic across the board and lends Okami a wholly unique identity despite sticking closely to Zelda's playbook in many other respects. The Switch port of Okami HD just might be the best version yet thanks to a number of new and returning enhancements from prior ports that play to the strengths of Nintendo's portable console. The Wii version's motion controls return, but they're both optional and limited to just the Celestial Brush and Fishing this time, which means those unfortunate waggle-to-attack controls are thankfully gone. While they never feel essential, the motion controls here have been well implemented for those who choose to use them. The same can be said of controlling the Celestial Brush via the Switch's touchscreen when playing in handheld mode, which is unique to this port. While this never feels necessary or even ideal in my opinion, the option is well implemented for those who want it and there is something to be said for how it kind of makes you feel like you really are Amaterasu, physically conjuring miracles into the world when the need arises. But it's the excellent implementation of HD Rumble across the board that makes the strongest case for the Switch version of Okami HD being the best one yet. Feeling the distinct pitter-patter of Ami's paws as you run through the world, especially when playing with the Joy-Con separated, is quantifiably superior to the standard rumble in previous versions and adds an additional layer of immersion that just wasn't possible before. You don't have to take my word for it, though. In a neat surprise, Capcom has included the option to toggle between the new HD rumble and the standard rumble from previous versions, allowing for direct comparisons between the two. If you're not yet convinced of HD rumble's value, Okami HD just might be the game that makes you a believer. Thoroughly excellent though Okami may be, it isn't perfect and the few missteps it does take return here in the Switch version. The combat, for example, is solid and entertaining but ultimately somewhat shallow, and enemies can be safely ignored altogether except for when the critical path forces you to fight. The game is also far too easy such that there's never any real danger of failure, which is another and likely unintentional commonality it shares with 3D Zelda. Furthermore, the game's many cutscenes and conversations, though mostly skippable, can feel long-winded thanks to characters who are far chattier than they need to be. Exposition is all well and good, but the denizens of Nippon have a penchant for taking far longer than necessary to get to the point. But these criticisms absolutely pale in comparison to all of the exceedingly positive and unique qualities that make Okami so deeply special. Even masterpieces have their flaws, and let there be no mistake, Okami is a masterpiece through and through, so much so that it's quite honestly mind-blowing. Despite adhering so closely to the design of 3D Zelda titles prior to Breath of the Wild, Okami carves out an identity all its own thanks to its breathtaking art style and soundtrack, compelling narrative, and fully realized world, not to mention the wholly unique and remarkably well-implemented Celestial Brush mechanic. Not only is it far better than the actual Zelda game in which you play as a wolf, Okami is one of the greatest action-adventure games of all time and an absolutely essential experience for fans of the genre. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and follow us on social media using the links in the video description below. Otherwise, keep it on Game Explained for more on Okami, the Nintendo Switch, and all things gaming.